Okay, to, so to start with, um, let's talk about the percentages that have been thrown around a lot. Um, people keep, you know, throwing around the 80%. In grades five through 12, in our, in our courses that are year long, from September to June, the way that our curriculum was written is we have four units of study. In each unit of study, we have two assessments. Now, assessments, like Dr. Taylor said, is a, a very, very loose term because assessments, it's an umbrella term, if you will. When we say assessments, um, we mean research papers, essays, journals, debates, diaries, lab reports. We consider those things to be assessments. Not necessarily just the traditional type of assessment that you think of when you hear the word assessment. Usually when people hear the word assessment, they think, okay, it's a 100 question test, 50 multiple choice questions, true and false, matching, some open-ended uh, questions and so on. Are some of our assessments like that? Yes, yeah, some. But more than half of them are performance-based because we want students to apply what they know in a new situation. That's the best way to up the rigor. That's the best, the best way to provide students with the opportunity to show the depth of knowledge that we are requiring that the state requires as part of the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. And that is best practice. So that's what we say when we use the word assessments. So if we're talking about grades 5 through 12 in a year-long course that has eight assessments, how much are the assessments worth? Each assessment is worth 10% of the grade. Each assessment is worth 10%, not 80%. Each assessment's worth 10%. Overall, at the end of the year, how the child does on those, ten, on those um, eight assessments, yes, it does add up to 80% when you look at the final grade for the year. But that doesn't mean that it's 80% per marking period. I think that something does get a little bit lost in that translation. Is this something that every district does? No, it's not, absolutely not. In my opinion, and that's why I've been brought here, it's something that I believe more districts should move towards. I do have countless examples of districts that have moved in this direction, and I would be glad to provide those. Um, let's talk next about, uh, there was a comment about um, teacher robots, teachers being robots. You know, in any, in any, um, curriculum system, you want to have a nice mixture of both freedom and a certain level of standardization. You need to have both. Because what you don't want is you don't want your child's academic performance solely dictated by the specific teacher that he or she has. You know, when, when I was in school, you would have the hard teacher, and then across the hall, the easy teacher. And you know, you'd get your schedule, and they'd be like, oh, ooh, you have Mr. Zaliga. I'm so sorry. He's the tough one. He's gonna give you a lot of tests, and he's gonna give you homework every night, but if you had Mr. So-and-so, it wouldn't be like that. That's a situation that we want to avoid. What we want is for all of our teachers to be equally rigorous and that's where the standardization comes in with the assessments that have been created centrally in collaboration with the teachers and the administration. The teachers have freedom. Where do the teachers have freedom? The teachers have freedom in the homework they assign, the quizzes they provide, the classwork they provide, and the lesson plans they create and actually implement in the classroom. So that is the freedom and the standardization all in one. We do not dictate what is happening in each class on a daily basis. The teacher begins with the end in mind. The teacher knows where he or she wants to take the students. And then the teacher creates a learning plan to help
help get the students in that direction. Our goal is not to create robots. The teachers do not have to be doing the exact same thing at the exact same time in the exact same course. It does vary, because it varies because of the children. The children in the classroom are different from one another. So a lot of people ask, why don't we have lesson plans in our curriculum guides? We don't, because the children are different from class to class. The teacher has to differentiate his or her instruction to meet the needs of the individual students in those classrooms. That's the freedom. The students then come together and are assessed in the same way from classroom to classroom because the standards are the same from classroom to classroom, school to school, throughout the district. That's where the standardization comes in. Next, students with IEPs. A student with an IEP, an individual education plan, receives a modified assessment. If the assessment is a traditional type of assessment, if the assessment is a performance-based assessment, that assessment, whatever the assessment is, is modified to meet the needs of that individual learner. Right? And all of the teachers know that, and all of the teachers must adhere to that. And the the, um, and the assessments are modified accordingly. Number four, student test anxiety. Wanted to, to really deal with this one. Um, as I was a child that had high anxiety, um, I may or may not have gotten rid of that anxiety, but um, as a child, I have 504. Um, I could not take a test in a classroom with my other peers uh, because the anxiety uh, was too much for me to bear. Uh, I couldn't concentrate, I would freak out, um, and um, I had to get a 504 so that I took my tests in a separate room alone um, to deal with that type of anxiety. And this was a weekly occurrence for me um, because I had tests non-stop. Non-stop assessment, non-stop assessment. Every single week, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. So what we're trying to do here is actually to limit the anxiety that students have, okay? We're never going to be able to completely remove anxiety from the equation, but we can reduce it and we can address it. And we're addressing it by one, reducing the total number of assessments, and two, making half of the assessments much more performance-based, like I said, so that they are assessments that don't feel like assessments. If I'm writing a journal in which I'm pretending to be a Civil War soldier and I am showing what I know by writing that journal, it doesn't take on the feel of an assessment in the same way as if I was given a 100 question test. So I'm very much aware of that. I'm very, very sensitive to that. And we try to create an assessment plan that reduces the overall anxiety of students, not increases it. Uh, somebody had mentioned that this isn't a problem with um, just the great uh, breakdowns. It's a rigor problem. Absolutely correct. It is a rigor problem. And the rigor on our assessments that we were administering was not up to par. If it was up to par, you'd see more of a correlation between the rigor on assessments that were not created by our staff. So it is a rigor problem. However, if it's a rigor problem and we only deal with the rigor and not with the grading breakdowns, then we're still going to get the results the same the way they, they were. The results will be exactly the same. So what you need to do is you need to attack this on two fronts. One, you need to address the rigor, which we are doing and to increase the depth of knowledge, which we are doing. And two, we need to address the grading breakdowns so that, again, at the end of the day, and for me, the end of the day is June, a student's grade reflects what they know and are able to do. And the last thing with regards to homework and quizzes, you know, why do homework and why do quizzes, you know, because they're not important anymore. It's only 20% of your grade. Yes, it is 20% of your grade. You should do homework. You should do classwork. You should do well on quizzes. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, 
you aced every single one of the eight assessments that you were given in, let's say, social studies grade eight. You were that good. You aced every single one. And for everything else, you didn't care about it. So at the end of the year, in June, you received an 80%. Is that something to throw a party over? No, I wouldn't say that. You could have done so much better than that. Because those things do have a place. They are important. They do contribute to a better understanding of the material, which will then lead to you doing better on the assessment itself. It's very rare for a student not to do classwork, not to do homework, not to do well on quizzes, and to do well on the assessments. That is an extreme anomaly. And so I don't think that that is, that is a case that's going to occur. I don't think that students are going to completely disregard those items because they may initially, but then they'll realize their value, their value in learning. Not just in the grade, but in the actual learning. Because that's what we're here about, and that's what we care about. I do care about that very much so. And again, I want authenticity. That's what I want, and that's what you should want, too. Authenticity in how the students are being graded so that it can accurately reflect what they know and are able to do. We shouldn't have situations where a student is in seventh grade and is on a third grade reading level. How did that happen? I don't know the entire story, but uh, I, I will put this out there. I guarantee you that some level of grade inflation did occur. Because if the child is coming home with A's and B's due to problems that were occurring, it gives the parent less question to quest it gives the parent less of a reason to question those results. And then you continue to do that and repeat it in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and voila, you get to seventh grade and you're hit with a reality check. And that's what we don't want. We want to avoid those types of situations. Those situations aren't good for you, they're not good for your children, they're not good for us. Okay, so I hope that that answers some of your questions. And again, if anybody has additional questions or wants to talk, I'm more than willing to sit down and, and talk with you about all of these.